So today, I am going to be discussing with us on how we can set up the VLAN or what you call inter-VLAN routing using a microtech switch. I've already done this post on my blog explaining how it can be done via the command line interface. But on this uh, video, I'm going to be sharing with us how to do this via the GUI interface. So if you have a Cisco router that is connecting to a Microtik device that is running router OS and you intend to use the Microtik device as a switch, this post is for you. So I'm going to go ahead here to turn on my devices on GNS3. As you can see, I have a cloud appliance there. So this will allow me to log into the Microtik via the command line interface and set up a management IP that will be acquired via this GNS3 cloud appliance. So while I'm here in the Microtik device, I am going to enable the device as a DSCP client on ETA5, which is the port connecting to the cloud appliance on GNS3. So the command is simple, IP, DSCP client, add, and then I choose the interface as ETA5. This device is going to acquire an IP address from the GNS3 cloud appliance. Now that I have the IP, I can log in using the Windows application. So we are here on the GUI platform of the Microtik. So the action points have been listed out here for us. This is the same what has been configured on my blog but it was done via the command line interface. We are going to be doing all this via the GUI. So the first thing to do here is to create a bridge. So I'm going to go to bridge, click on the add button and then create a bridge. So right here, I have decided to leave it at the default name bridge one. You can change it to whatever you want. Enable VLAN filtering, apply, and okay the next step is to add ports to the bridge i have just created and also define the vlans that each port is going to be a member of and from the topology i have here ether 2 is on vlan 10 ether 3 is on vlan 20 ether 4 is on vlan 30. so as you can see i have uh, I'm adding the port. So the port that ETA1 belongs to is port 1 because that, that ETA1 is going to be my trunk port. So next is ETA2 and it belongs to VLAN 10. Apply and OK. The next is ETA3. It belongs to VLAN 20. So the VLAN ID is VLAN 20. So what happens if you click on OK? Let me know in the comment section. If you, if you are one of those that do, one of those people that do not click on apply before clicking on OK, let me know what you think about it. So the next is ETA4. ETA4 belongs to VLAN 30. So I'm going to set the VLAN ID for ETA4 to 30. So here I am done uh, setting up the port. So this is uh, similar to what you call port assignment in Cisco, where you have to say switch port mode trunk, switch port mode access, or switch port access VLAN 10 to define which VLAN the port uh, is a member of. So the next thing we are going to do here is to define the port role. Is it an access port or a trunk port? And as you can see on the screen, I already have some dynamic ports that have been added here. But there is no definition on whether the port is a tagged or untagged port. So here is it. A lot of people get caught up, you know, in this new web of Cisco terminology because Cisco uses trunk and access. Industry standard is tagged 
and untagged. So tagged ports are trunk ports, whereas untagged ports are access ports. So you can see VLAN 10, the trunk port is ETA1, and then the uh, access port, which is the untagged port, is uh, port 2. So for VLAN 20, the access port is port, port 3. Okay, the trunk port remains the same, which is ETA1. So I'm going to add for VLAN 30. So VLAN 30, the tagged port is ETA1. The untagged port is ETA4. Then, of course, uh, I'm going to do for my management VLAN, which is VLAN 99. So for management VLAN, there is no untagged port because we are not using it. There's no access port there. So it's going to be ETA1 for tagged and also bridge 1 for tagged as well. So that is it. So we are done here with port definition or whatever you want to call it. We have defined our trunk port as ETA1 and then the others are access port that belongs to various VLANs. The next is to create our management interface. So go to interface, add name is VLAN 99 and the VLAN ID is 99 and the interface is ETA1. So I apply that and I'll OK it. So at this point, I'm done with uh, uh, the configuration of a management interface. So now I need to assign an IP address to the management interface. So the IP is 99.1192.168.99.1 and I will assign it to VLAN 99 that I just created now. Then I can assign a default gateway for out of band management to this switch. So go to IP route and simply add a gateway. So this gateway is the IP address I'm going to have on the router on VLAN 99 subnet. So it is 99.254. Now I am done with this switch configuration. At this point, I'm done with the micro tick. So the next step is to set up the Cisco router. And since it's not really part of what I set out to do here, I am just going to fast forward the process and let you so that we can quickly go to the devices and have them acquire IP addresses via JCB. So on the Cisco router, I am going to, because we are running a router on the stick, I'm going to create sub interfaces for each VLAN. So as you can see on the screen, I have sub interface for VLAN 10, I have for 20, I have for 30, and of course, I'll have for 99. So apart from creating the sub interfaces and assigning IP addresses from different VLANs, I also need to set up DHCP for each of the VLANs such that the devices I have in different VLANs should be able to acquire IP addresses from their respective VLANs. So I'm setting up the DHCP now, IP DHCP pool VLAN 10, and you define the network 10.0 24, the default gateway is 10.1, and the DNS servers are 10.1 and 8.8.8.8. .8 so next is for VLAN 20, I define the network as 20.0 slash 24. The default router, which is the default gateway, is 20.1. And of course, the DNS, 20.1, 8.8.8.8. And the next is for uh, VLAN 30, IP DSP pool, VLAN 30, the network 30.0 slash 24. Just a repetition of the same old thing. So, I'm done with the DHCP configuration at this point. There's no need creating a DHCP for uh, VLAN 99, which is my management VLAN. So the next is to exempt some IPs, exclusion. You don't want the DHCP server to give out the IP that you have already given as your default gateway, as well as the broadcast IP. So at this point, I'm done with my configuration. The host machines I have are actually Cisco routers and I'm using them as pieces. So I'm going to go to these devices and set them up for DHCP client to have them acquire IP addresses via the Cisco router 
that serves as my DHCP server. So as you can see, I'm on PC2 now, and the interface connecting to the MicroTik is being configured now as a DHCP client. I'll go to PC3 and also do the same thing. Config T, interface F0 of 0, IP address DHCP. So I'm setting the interface as a DHCP a client and also enabling it by saying no shot. So you can see that Ether2 already has an IP 192.168.20.0 and from Ether2 I can ping 10.2 which is the PC1 and I can also ping 30.2 which is PC3 and of course I can ping 20.2. There you have it guys. We have configured router on a stick using a MicroTik switch and a Cisco router. If you found this post useful, why not subscribe to this channel, like this post, and turn on post notification. Thank you, and see you in my next video.